Welcome to the Participation Coaching Podcast with Richard Shaw. Hello everyone, this is Wojciech Wasniewski and you're listening to the Participation Coaching Podcast, which is my little learning project to explore effective non-performance coaching. So how do we coach beginners? How do we coach recreational players and, and juniors? And today I'm picking brains of Richard Shaw. He's the founder of Community Golf. And he grows golf for a living. Community golf's mission statement is making a difference to people's lives. And they're literally organizing golf activities every single day in the parks, schools, colleges, community centers, etc. So we mainly talk about grassroots growth, but we also talk about Richard's story, um, changing people's behavior. We talk about the importance of environment. We talk about community golf as a company, its history, its goals, activities they provide every day. We talk about definitions of success. Um, we talk about inclusive coaching and coaching people with disabilities. We talk about funding, hospitality, lifetime value of golfers and many, many different things. We even talk about urban golf a little bit. Hope you find it useful. Let me know on the participationcoaching.com website or send me an email, hi at participationcoaching.com. Let's dive right in. All right, Rich, how did you, how did you get started in golf? Um, that's, a, that's a good question. Uh, my, uh, my, my father got me into it very young. Um, I've got videos of me at the age of two um, <laughs> hitting uh, larger, <laughs> much larger than a golf ball, but but hitting uh, you know a, uh, a a much larger ball around my nan's garden, and then it sort of just went on from there. Really, my dad bought me a, a little plastic clubs, and um, you know then then. Uh, my dad, my dad was a uh, late starter in golf, so I think he started playing when he was about twenty. I want to say twenty-eight, maybe thirty, maybe thirty-two, something around there. Um, and I, so I'd always have sort of club. My dad would always have clubs around and things like that, and he'd always encourage me to play, despite him not really playing. I think he always knew that it was a sport that he was aspiring to, and then sort of I just got kind of sucked up with that really. Um, yeah, then went then went along. Uh, to a to a local course, just a pay and play course. Um, had some coaching. Um, my dad would always take me out on the pitch and putt, so I always used to enjoy that. There was loads of pitch and putt just around us. I'm very lucky. I was from a, uh, a golf at uh, uh, Addington, which is a, or I grew up in Addington, which has got three golf clubs within one mile. <laughs> so, um, so you've got a pay and play, you've got a members club, and you've also got. A pretty prestigious club which is called the Addington which was I think ranked in I think 20 top 25 in in uh, in the UK so it was up there in um so yeah just very lucky really growing up that's that's how I got started and then just sort of went from there then joined the members club down the road um as I progressed and then you know it's, it's sort of been a it's been a story since then really I've just always love the game and love what it stands for and I've always played lots of other sports as well so I've I've never really been sort of a golf specific person and, and really focused on golf um you know I play lots of football I still play football twice a week now so um I'm still very active across you know not just in golf but but you know uh, but across lots of different sports here are running the community golf and it's like it, it fascinated me for a for a while that we've met a couple of times before like it's, yeah. it's so unique in, in a way that there is not too, i don't know maybe maybe i'm wrong but there's not many organizations or, or companies that do let's say grassroots um golf growth um apart from like the ngbs um so i think it's hard yeah i think it i think it i think it's a it's a it's a hard area of work it, it really is tough um you know, you're you're trying to, you know, we, we've got we've got, you know, throwing all the buzzwords, at, but but you know, behaviour change and trying to get people to change their behaviour from doing, you know, even not even no golf, but no activity, you know, that that's really worrying. Mm. Um, you know, there's you know, there's, you know, rather people go outside and play on the streets or play in the back garden, they just sit in front of the TV and watch the TV or play PlayStation, and that that just terrifies me. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I've I like I like playing FIFA and I like playing PlayStation <laughs> and things like that. But but and then on the flip side of it, you know, he's like, what would I rather be doing? I, I just want to be outside going to play. And um, I was always like that as a kid, just sort of like growing up. I'd always be outside and uh, where I was swinging on a tree or 
running through the woods or um that's always that's always what I wanted to do um but yeah I mean it is quite unique really um I think one of the reasons for it like I said before it, it is hard and the work that we do is 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 really tough because you're not necessarily trying to change someone's um you know change change you know you're, you're trying to change their behavior and that is ingrained in them a lot of them from a very young age um I mean, we do work with with young people, but you know, some of the time we only work with them for one or two hours a week. So, how much, you know, how much change can you really, you know, how much change can you really make? Yeah. So, um, I think part of our, our, our the, m- the most important work that we do is alongside other partners, where we become part of a much bigger, you know, sort of societal change um, uh, projects and things like that. I think if we were to just do our work in isolation, then I think that we we, ult- we we would we would we would fail in our mission, in our, in our sort of social mission to to help people and um and the mission statement at the moment is to make a difference to people's lives, mm. um which is quite a broad spectrum really, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um and actually it's quite interesting to me that actually that doesn't you know within that mission statement it, the, the, the golf is not mentioned. So I think that's quite unique in itself that, you know, I've, I've always, I've always loved people and I, and I, and I love talking to people and, I, you know, I always believe in people and, you know, sometimes it get me in a bit of trouble, but, but sometimes, you know, I believe in people of, you know, that, 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 that most, most people and, you know, 99.9% of the population are, are good people. And, um, and, that, and that's always the belief that we've kind of had. And, and when you provide them with, opportunities then 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 good things happen so that's great so what is community golf like for some of the listeners that might not know <laughs> what is it and how did it start uh, like do you remember the day when it's when it started or when you when you thought of it yeah so um so i remember having a conversation with um my friend and colleague um phil beard um back in see at the time he was england golf young people manager uh he'd been man he'd been mentoring me for probably probably about six or seven years at that point um i'd come through the youth panel so i'd I'd been part of the england golf youth panel which i'm sure you're aware of um and um and and we we just we just said oh what are we going to do you know like i mean there's a there still seems to be less um still seems to be in our own communities there still seems to be less people taking up golf um you know, what, is there another answer? Is there? I'd worked with um, the Golf Foundation. I'd worked with England Golf. I'd worked through their programs, and um, and I think that although there was some um, some great work going on, I just I always felt that there was there was something more that we could do, and I wasn't quite sure of how we could scale it. So or scale up something that is really good, and then try and then scale that up to be a lot wider than just you know one pj pro at a, cu- a club then try and widen it out across and I, and I still don't think actually within you know i've been working on it for four years now I, st- I still you know there there is no there is no you know golden um golden answer or golden nugget if you like there's not there's there, there isn't one um there, there, there's some there's some seeds and there's some there's some there's some ideas but i still don't think there's a sort of silver bullet that says yeah okay that's it and i don't think there ever will be um i don't think there ever i mean and and i I always say to people now that that community golf is not the answer (laughs) it's just part of this it's part of the solution or it's part of it it's a part of along with every other community organization or club-based intervention that that can hopefully help it's it's certainly not uh, i've never ever thought to myself community golf is the answer to the to golf's problems and the world's problems i think that's Mm -hmm. That would be very foolish of us to <laughs> to think that, um, but still be aspirational for people as well. So it's it's always a balance in that. We want to we want to think, um, but it's it's a community interest company. We we I'll say those conversations come around in December. I think it was two thousand and gosh two thousand and twelve, um, and it's just kind of flown by really. Um, I had a difficult decision to make at the time in uh, December because at that time when I was having those conversations i was i was full-time employed with with surrey golf and i was the county development officer there um and then 
Um, then I then I you know in I think it was January towards the end of January thirty first of January, um, we, or we I'd, I made a I made a decision that I was going to start a community interest company. Um, you know, and and at the time that was a, that was a, I look back at it now and I think why on earth did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I had, but I, you know, my, my dad's a, um, had, had always been really invested in golf, and and his and a lot of people don't know this, but he's he's a he's a he's a professional as well, PJ assistant professional mm-hmm. at the moment. He's going through his training to finish off and be PJ professional, and he's quite traditional in his thinking, which is I think he's quite interesting. Um, certainly, given me a lot of balance, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, in terms of thinking and. You know, we've certainly had some discussions over a Sunday lunch. I can tell you, <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine <laughs> about how things perhaps could be different. So, I think when it's when it's in your blood, you know, sometimes and it, you know it, it it's um you know there's a lot of a lot of thought that goes into it, and I never stop really. But um and just from that moment, you know, I I I dropped a day with Surrey Golf, uh, so that I, you know I went down to four days, um and I started community golf. I think it was on my Friday. As I remember it now, um, and uh, and uh, we we started with a couple of we started with a couple of colleges, uh, two colleges. We started with two schools, secondary schools, and we also started with two uh, centres for adults with learning disabilities. Um, I had my colleague uh, Mandy Jarvis who helped me um, in the initial stages, and she certainly did some of the um, some of the grunt work really that that I didn't have the time to do, um, and I, I really appreciated that at the time. Uh, despite having very limited resources and you know i think we start i think there was something like three clubs and a couple of balls or no two two clubs three balls and i think that's our tagline at the moment too <laughs> you know and some passion <laughs> but it was but it was it was not there was no you know i, I still remember we um we, we were doing some the two the two centers that we were working with were in uh mole valley district which were sort of like central surrey um and the council gave us three hundred pound check. <laughs> <laughs> we thought we thought we'd won the lottery. <laughs> we'd gone from zero pounds to three hundred pounds. We were just like ecstatic of, of what we've achieved. Um, it was it was a uh, it was a, it was an amazing period. Um, but it was also, you know, for for any entrepreneurs out there as well, it's certainly some learning and you know, and you and you do have the nights where you think. I don't know how I'm going to pay the bills there, you know, or, you know, and that's certainly you know, not in the initial stage because I was working for Surrey Golf at the same time. And that was, that gave me, you know, a comfort. But then when I stepped away and that was, I think that's coming up to three years ago now. Uh, what's that? Um, May 2000 and I want to say 14. I think it was 14. Um, yeah, I think it was 14. Um at that stage, it, you know, it was it was wow. We're gonna, you know, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna, it, we're really going for this. Mm. <laughs> that was quite nerve. I think it was 2015 actually, because um, we had the uh, European Urban Golf uh, Championships, which you'll you'll remember. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll definitely go. Oh, that was, go back to it. That was pretty nuts. Yeah, it's pretty nuts. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, I've, um, but yeah, so that's kind of how it how it kind of started out really. Um, and then since then we've. I mean, we now work with a lot of organisations. We have um, six core staff. Um, we have a lot of volunteers who who give up their time for the for the for the social mission again to to help people's uh, sorry to uh, make a difference to people's lives. And people really do give up a lot of time uh, to help us, including even on with Simon, who's our finance slash business, who's given up a lot of voluntary time as in, in business support and and that and that is you know even that is a huge value to our organization not just the delivery on the ground but all of the countless hours that go in behind the scenes you know obviously you know we get all bits and and it, it looks great on you know you send a newsletter out and things like that but you know it's all of that stuff that goes on behind the scenes and i'm just really grateful to those people who who do give up that time so we can you know, so we get the good times as well as the bad. You know, hmm. so so what, what sort of activities do you do now? I know you go into uh, colleges, schools. So what, what sort of what's the let's say what what forms the majority of what you do, and how does it look like every day? We have a lot of different sessions. Um, um, we tr- we try where we can to make them bespoke. 
Um, so there's no point in us. Um, we have, we have two two kind of angles really as well. We have sort of a coaching side where which is much more formal and you know you're getting a group for an hour. Um, and then we also have you know informal sessions that we where we do um, where we'll be there for an hour and it's just for you know, for a lot of young people that you know some of them bringing them along for an hour they're just they're not as they're not at that stage in their development so they they're not going to commit to doing a whole hour of golf but they probably quite like to come along for the 10 or 20 minutes mm. you know and just pop around hit a few shots ask a few questions and that's absolutely fine as well um it's sort of joining the link so we so we have different programs i think the informal is more like the sort of what we call the activating so we have activators and then we also have formal sessions with, which are delivered by our coaches um I do some of those myself, uh, even today, which I, I really enjoy doing. Um, and actually, it keeps, it keeps me on the ground as well. Um, keeps me fresh. I had a group last week, and, you know, certainly some learning out of there. I had some behavioural challenges to deal with <laughs> in one of the sessions I did. And I had nine nine kids, three of which were, had, had a, again, it is a learning disability, but they're behavioural issues. And, you know, and, and you have to deal with those. And, and, and I, and to some and to some extent, you know, that every session, this is what amazed me, every session, I think for four years, has been different. <laughs> every single session um, that we've done is is just so different. And, okay, there are some similarities between X and Y, and we've got different games that we use. And um, but it's just the, the the biggest the biggest thing to to be able to engage those people is be really flexible and have lots of different you know, lots of different social cues and lots of different social tools to be able to engage that group. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I always feel, I've, I've said this not too long ago, I said this a couple of weeks ago to um, to some some people at England Golf. Um, and, uh, and I said to them, I said, it's not really the games and the activities that's the most important thing. It's the environment and it's the way you make people when they're at our session. Okay, the games can add a bit of value, and you know you've seen some of our games, the Drain It game, which which I am obsessed with. <laughs> what is it? And the what's, bottle it what's one the game? is a new one. Uh, it's Drain It, so you've got like a drain that runs up, so it's like a half pipe, and then it runs up into a hole. But to putt the ball up there is really, it's actually really difficult, <laughs> <laughs> you know. And um, and actually, even one of the ladies uh, last week that we had last week said, "Can I buy this piece of kit?" <laughs> we were like, "Well, we haven't really thought," <laughs> but so that's that's i think there's lots of different spin-offs from you know and so there's lots of ways of getting people engaged and ultimately if we can create the environment okay if you can back it up with good equipment and stuff like you know that that adds value but you know it, w when we first started we had no we had we didn't have any equipment mm -hmm. and we still managed to to get a, a, a really good experience still so i still think that there's a lot more work we can do but I still think that you know if you, if you if you if you're struggling with equipment or if you're you know you can still create the right environment just by um, just by being yourself, having some fun, you know. Don't be scared of you know you know do, do, you know to be prepared to just take some risks and 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 sometimes they come off, sometimes they don't, and then as you improve your uh, your coaching, then you then you start to know what what might work with particular groups or. You know, or things you pick up in an email from a, a teacher. So there's a lot. There's a lot that goes into it, even before the session, before we get there. You know, we we ask specific questions now. You know, like before we never had. You know, what additional needs do your students have? We never asked that up until about a year ago. Mm. So we were getting to sessions and going, <laughs> you know, there might be special educational needs, but we don't actually know what their needs are. <laughs> so how can, how can we cater to the group? You know. There might be preparation. Okay, well, two of the group are actually blind. All right. Well, thanks for letting you know. If we hadn't asked the question, yeah. um, <laughs> we would have got to the session, and we've got no, you know, so we wouldn't have been able to prepare right. And so there's, so there's, there's so many, you know, so many aspects to what we do now. And I think the, the, the you know, it, it, there's obviously a lot of people see, just see things on the photos, but it doesn't give a, a true reflection of where the business is right now. There's a lot that goes on. Um, behind the scenes to mm -hmm. to make it tick so and that's important as well yeah so it's the, so it's the coaching sessions the games and there's like a leaderboard and like a tournament series is it 
Yeah, so we have um, we now have a, um, a what we call a community league. Um, so all of the games that we play are streamlined in every. So we have a spring league, we have a summer league, we have a summer holiday league, and we have an autumn league. So it kind of works for the school terms, just because everyone works that way, really. Mm-hmm. Um, so and and the points that they score are relatable against all of the different groups that we work with. So it is actually an inclusive community league of everyone. Um, we, we have older people centers that compete in it. We have uh, primary schools, we have secondary schools, uh, we have SEN schools, we have pupil referral units. And I think the next stage of that, which, which we've kind of done some pilot work last year with our events and our kind of tournament series, not really, to, uh, not tournament series, but, but, but almost like the majors, if you like, <laughs> the community golf <stuff> majors, <laughs> Uh, which I quite like the idea of. Um, but, yeah, perhaps in, this year we will have um, so many events, but that's to be specced up at the moment. We've, that's that's, uh, that's, um, that's certainly moving forward what we're looking to do and use the, you know, I mean, we had, we engaged about 5,000 people last year. Hmm. So that's a lot of people that, okay, that some of them might have only touched to one and we, we estimate it's about 3,000 that we've only sort of touched at one event or had a touch point with them. But still, those 3,000 are still, perhaps they've had a good experience. How are we following up on that? So there's all these sort of questions that we're having with ourselves. But we do know last year, we've, I think it was 1967 was the amount of people. Okay, do those 1967 want to take golf further? If yes, okay, here's some options. If no, why not? Let's ask some questions. Perhaps they're seeing golf in a different way to where we're seeing it. Well, we think it's interesting. <laughs> maybe we're biased. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe a bit biased. But then, but then on the other side of it, we're also looking at, okay, if we can get those people active, um, perhaps there's a benefit to the local community, and that, you know, or society, and that if they're more physically active, they might be more likely to do football, to do, uh, to do physical activity, to do, go to the gym, or um, any number of things. They might just want to do some volunteering at the local youth centre, or mm-hmm. um, so we're certainly looking at it from a broader perspective than just golf. And I, I do, the the name is kind of set up that way, but the community does come first before the golf. And that's a bit cliche, right? <laughs> but that's the reason for that is that we are, we're, we're very much about the community first and then, and engaging the people. And then the golf is the secondary side of it. So that's where our thinking is. And I think that's quite unique in itself. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> yeah it sounds... Sorry if that doesn't answer your question. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's as good an answer as any. Um, so I want to ask you which uh, community golf project was most successful. But first, like, w- what is success for you? You said that you you follow up with people to see if they take up golf or whether they want to take up. Is, is this the? Well, I, I now I know you answered with your previous answer that it's it's not really the the main um, let's say like goal. So, what is success for you? Okay, so success for me, and and we are we are looking at this at the moment as well of, of and, re- and rewriting our strategy for the next three years. But success to me is what the mission statement says, and and that can be taken in any number of ways. Um. So to make a difference to people's lives, that is the mission statement. Um, there are certainly outcomes that will spin out of that. And, um, and one of those outcomes will be related to physical activity. Um, one of those outcomes will have, you know, because of our roots within golf, it would be silly not for, for us not to develop a strand for golf. So there will be some. The other strand that we will have will be related to um, uh, engaging people with disabilities who, you know, all of the research is, um, all of the research is uh, saying to us that people with disabilities are, I think, 50% less likely to engage in physical activity and sport. Mm. Um, if, if you start to add those numbers up, that, that becomes a real serious, you know, issue especially as the number of people with disabilities is actually increasing there are more people there are more kids now going through school <laughs> that are being classified as uh, someone with a disability right. 
ADHD, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we, we do have a real issue in our society. So one of our aspects will be to, to work on that. Um, and then, um, the other one, so we've done health inclusion. Um, Oh, I'm looking for my, I'm looking for my list of things. Oh, education as well. So education will be one of our, um, strands and, and, and what does that really look like at the moment? We're, we're, we're defining what that means for us. So we are in, you've caught us in the middle of, uh, I hate the word strategy, but I, did, I am going to use it. <laughs> but strategizing at this stage in our development of where we want to go in the next three years. So, but it, it it's very likely to be along those elements. So health, inclusion, or slash disability, mm-hmm. and education. They're kind of like the and 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 how they then link to community. So there will be some outcomes coming out from us soon. I, they are. Well, we've got to be honest with you. We've got too many at the moment. We've got about, I think it was about two hundred outcomes that that we created, and then now we're narrowing down. So yeah. <laughs> there's a lot. Uh, there's a lot. Of, I've actually, I'm actually looking at them now, and there's about three of three pages of <laughs> outcomes. So, <laughs> so we're we're narrowing we're narrowing our focus as well, which will hopefully allow us to be a bit more clearer mm-hmm. in what we are actually looking to achieve right. um, over the next year, two years, three years. So, as, so yeah. As, so as an example, um, will there like is there any event that comes to your mind that hit one or more of or of these outcomes like particularly well, like s- any type of event or just one one event or one I don't know group that you that stands out to you? Okay, so yeah, so yeah, there's one there's one for me, and that was um, we we did a, a a golf day, an inclusive uh, an in- inclusive golf day at um, at Epsom Golf Club. Uh, which included uh, we had 80 adults with learning disabilities that came that learning and physical and and multiple disabilities that came to that day Um, the 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 people's feedback of the day was 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 exceptional Um, even the golf club feedback bearing in mind that um, and and we only know this anecdotally and I don't think there's been any real you know, sort of hard evidence into it, but the golf club <laughs> within within a couple of hours it had sent us an email saying we want you back next year. <laughs> we were like, well, we were the cu- we were the customer, <laughs> you know, like if we were <laughs> surely it should be, you know, like or um, uh, you know, it, it shouldn't have surely it shouldn't have happened that quick. Okay, we, we were, you know, we wanted to say thank you very much for having us, <laughs> you know, rather than the other way. That's funny, but um, but so so yeah, so and they. I don't know. I think they saw a side, and and we certainly saw it. It just reinforced to me that, you know, a golf club with its very traditional nature could really, and and even members came out and were like, oh, "What's going on here?" And that's development in itself. And they they're not just golf club members. I think this is the thing we miss sometimes. They are people, and they do actually have social connections outside of golf clubs as well. Mm. <laughs> it's not like just you know that like, they are people and. <laughs> yeah. You know, some of them might be a some of them might be a board member for a business, and some of them might be, you know, um, a tennis player down at local tennis. Okay, hopefully that can you know the fact. That, so we we don't actually to some extent you can you can say okay, well this is what we wanted to achieve, but um, but on the flip side of it, some of the time you don't know what you're going to get out of it, and that's actually quite exciting. Um, so who knows what that the impact of that day was. All we know is that eighty. All we really know is that eighty adults learned disability came to a golf club. They played some golf. Uh, they played a little three-hole course. They played some of our games. They did putting on the putting green. They went into the simulator and played. I think the final hole of St Andrews or or wherever it was. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, and they had fun. And that, you know, if eighty people are having fun, they're doing some physical activity which they may not have done. It's, it's, you know, again, it's, it's sort of encouraging them to, um, to do that. And that was success for us. Um, and you know, again, the next stage of that is, can we do it again? Can we get more people there? Uh, can, or, or can we do other things that add value to the day? So even if we just get 80 adults with learned disabilities there again, maybe we're going to add another, you know, maybe it's a, maybe it's a service from a local council who want to talk to those people about the benefits or, or, 
or a, a particular service that they want to offer um, to those people. It might be that, I mean, it might be that there's, there's, there's some football there or some foot golf mm-hmm. or some, you know, it could be, it could be any number of things. And we, we are actually, we are at the stage where if, 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 if people want and organizations want to partner with us as well, we're very, very open to that potential. We're certainly not here to, um, to take anyone's business. We're here to create business. Those 80 people would never have gone to Epsom golf club ever. Mm. That's an impact. They're in the system now. How do we as golf or society now engage them and keep engaging them? And my worry is at the moment is we're not actually being approached by that many organizations and people to say, we want to work with you. Now that's either one thing is that we're getting our messaging wrong, <laughs> which could, have, it could be. Or the second thing is these organizations that look after these people, they're not there or they don't have the capacity. And that is a, that's a real worry of mine. That's personally, that's not really business wise, but, yeah. but I think that's so, so what a success. Looks like? That's a very good question. Um, I think it, I'm going to sort of shirk it a little bit and say that it, it depends on the particular group and depends what they're looking to get out of it. So we try and, we try and match the needs of those people and, um, and all our events are different as well. So all of the events that we've done, um, we did another event for, I think it was 90, um, children with special educational needs. I think nine schools came, um, you know, again, they came and had fun with their friends that they don't really see that often. You know, they're, they're actually, that's their own community. And we've, we managed to do something fun that we can all do together as well. So that's, I think, really powerful. Mm. I've had a little bit of experience with inclusive coaching uh, during, okay. during a university. And then afterwards, just, just a little bit. It's, it's very rewarding, but very, very tough, isn't it? Like, um, we did a day, we did a day for, um, for kids from special needs schools. Okay. Um, okay. And it was, it was amazing, but so tough. I think it's, I think it's, um, it, it, I enjoy it more than mainstream. Hmm. I, I just enjoy it. I, I just have it. Um, I just, I, I just, you know, the, the, one of the issues with, I find with, with mainstream students is that they, um, they, they sort of take it for granted. You know, you go in there, you deliver a session and it's like, oh, well, you know, Oh, thanks. But I'm not really that bothered about this. I kind of want to go and talk to that girl over there or something. And, mm-hmm. and you think, oh, God, okay, right. This is secondary schools, you know, once they get into that age and stuff. And you're like, okay, right. Well, you know, clear off then. We don't, not really bothered. Okay, see you later. See you later. But when you go into a, when you go into a, uh, an SEN school and, or a particular unit that works with a um, particular group of, you know, whether it's special education needs or it might be physical disabilities, et cetera then you really that they they engage with it because they're they're, they're, they're very grateful they're m- much more grateful okay wow and, and it may be and you don't know the situation you know we we go into these uh, units or schools or 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 communities and and you don't know what their background is and you don't you don't you know it might might have been that no one outside of this session actually talked to them mm. for a week that could happen, or, or, or some of the people that we have that have, um, you know, v- cannot verbally communicate with people, can find no way to communicate, but they do it through golf. They communicate with people. They show people that they can swing the club. You know, that is part of communication, um, and 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 so that again, that has huge value for for me as a coach i mean i I had one session this was in december and i I finished up and i had a i had a lady in um in a in a in a wheelchair that that only had movement of her right wrist tiny tiny movement tiny movement i said to her i said we're gonna do this and that and i'm gonna be here until the end of the session if it's (laughs) we are gonna hit this ball (laughs) towards that (laughs) towards that target (laughs) And that's so she did the first two and, and she wasn't quite getting it. And I said, right, okay, get, let me get, so we had some adapted equipment there. So I, I grabbed some and, and, and actually England golf gave me a bit of equipment. Um, just, just some, some long tri golf clubs. I don't know if you've seen them, but they're for, they're for adults and particularly for, 
um, for people with disabilities. No, no, anyway, I haven't anyway, seen so, them. Oh, you've got to see them. They are brilliant. They are they are brilliant. Anyway, I'll get you one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the she she then goes okay right. She's lining up. She can, I can see that she knows what she's doing. She hit this ball, and honestly, the smile on her face was just you know that was that was so rewarding. So rewarding. She hit this ball and it went straight in the target. We just had some hoops that we had put down. And, you know, house, house, oh, just so, such a, gra- you know, such a simple activity and, and you know, that could entertain and really satisfy someone's, um, you know, someone's need to do something. And, and, you know, such an easy way for, for people to, um, to enjoy, you know, enjoy their life and enjoy and, and, and you know, in, enjoy what they were doing at that particular time. You know, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. That, that has a huge effect. Um, and they are people. And, and you know, um, that's that's what I really enjoy about it. They, I, I really enjoy that engagement. And um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll keep doing it. <laughs> if you don't mind. <laughs> Golf is quite unique in, in this sense that it could be it can be can be adapted to almost anyone and uh, i remember the uh last summer i went to a pjs of europe conference and one of the uh, one of the present presenters was craig thomas and yeah okay yeah, yeah good guy I like him yeah he did a presentation around inclusive coaching and actually yeah. like the the business behind it he, he created a business around it that it's um it's an incredible, incredible way of like, as you say, it's so rewarding and it's it's just great experiences for both coaches and the and the students. But also, like some people, some coaches think that there is like, no money there, and obviously money is, is important. Like, <laughs> and Craig, he showed us ways and um, and some data that there is there is funding that um, that you can actually live off uh, inclusive coaching. A hundred percent. There's, there's a, there's, you know, the market is there. You know, they're, they're people at the end of the day, and 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 when you know, when you see things of people with disabilities, they do they do have their own budgets. And there's this sort of perception where there's something out at the moment called the individual individualized personal budget, and so they they so they have a budget, and and you know, there's no difference. There's no difference to anyone to anyone else that. Yep. Um, that you know, everyone has a budget. <laughs> um, I choose to buy some golf balls and you know, and whereas you know, and shopping and things like that. <laughs> you know, they and 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 you know, so they they do have budgets um, and they do have their own um, spending power. And then, like you say, there are organisations that can help. There are funders. Um, some of the funders can be difficult. I'll be honest with you. Some of the funders can be difficult, and they do put guidelines around how they want their money spent, mm-hmm. um, which I think is. It does hold some projects back, and I, you know, I've been honest about that with with some of the funders as well. Um, but it is the way it is, you know. It, it you know, if, if you if you're prepared to put in the work, and you know, and there have been times where I've had to do late nights, and you know, to get it to where it is, and you know, that's just what you got to do. I certainly didn't come into this to a nine to five, so um, it. Uh, you know, again, the, the 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 money is there, and in the same way, you know, you know, and then Neil Neil was talking about juniors, and you know, and, and there is a market, there is a market, and so um, if if you can get your get your stall in order and set yourself up, be really professional throughout your business, then there's there's certainly an opportunities to to make money at it as well, and there's nothing there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong. I think there's a I think there's a perception that when you work in a particular sector of community sport or or in the community and all this, you know, I sometimes get these some sometimes these jibs from my dad, you know, and you're like, you know, oh, you work in the community and all this stuff. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with earning money in the community doing that type of work. There's nothing wrong with that. Don't feel that you have to give up all your time on a voluntary basis. Um, some of the time we do because the right. You know, I can't give away the because there isn't a, it, it, you know it, it you you can do some things voluntary and you can do some things paid you know yep. 
and I've and I've done things in the past because of voluntary because it's it's been a good thing to do. You know, some of the times I I give lessons to to people with disabilities, you know, because there's a situation or there's something that's happened or you know. So I think we should always be you know be trying to make some money, but then on the flip side of it as well, I don't think it should be all be driven by money. You know, I've just seen Craig. You know, Craig's just taken on a voluntary role. At, at England Golf as a, you know, I think the elite disability manager mm. or, or, or a coach. Great. You know, one thing it's, it's great for, you know, it's just a good thing to do. Yeah. The second thing is it's going to give a good profile and you can build your profile as well. And, and so, you know, um, but I'm lucky cause I, I enjoy what I do. I love what I love working with those people. So this isn't a job to me. I don't, I don't come to work to earn money. Mm-hmm. I come to work because I love what I do, and that's that 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 has motivated me through my career um, to be doing what I'm doing today. You know, just just a love of what you're doing, and I think I think that's you know some of the time I think we've got to find what we love to do much more as well. Mm. I think um, there's a lot. Uh, I know a lot of people, I know a lot of my friends who who you know who who don't love what they do. And as soon as that bell goes, or not bell, that's at school. <laughs> but but as soon as but as soon as the you know five o'clock's up, right out, you know, out the door, you know. And and that and that I think as a you know as as society, we should be trying to we should be tr- trying to do more of the things that we do love to do. Um, you know, and 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 yeah, you know, maybe maybe to some extent, you know, nine to, nine to five and working hard and. You know, people sometimes work really hard and work past five o'clock, you know, even when they're not paid to sometimes, you know. But at the same time, you know, if you love what you do, you, you, you know, don't stop at five o'clock and go, oh, no, I need to stop now. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, I, I enjoy it. So I'm very, I'm very lucky. But I hope more people will find what they love to do. And then I think that I think that will help in, you know, to making money as well and, and generating more income and that type of thing. Talking about money, two questions. Um, yeah. One, why did you choose to um, to run community golf as a non-profit? One, it was uh, easier to to do all the governance side of things um, than than being a charity. So that was that was one thing in terms of being a community interest company. Mm-hmm. Um, we do have to. Um, we do have to provide certain paperwork at the end of the year. So there is a sort of governance side to it. Um, the second reason of not being was, was we were, at, we opened ourselves up to grants and funding that we were able to access. So as a limited company, we weren't able to do that. Right. Um, but then there are certain things that, you know, I mean, we, we still charge for certain services that we have. So could we be a limited company? Probably it, it's it, you know it's um but then we would you know if we were living we wouldn't necessarily uh attract the grants and funding that to do certain projects um specific projects that we want to do so it just, it just gave us the flexibility really mm-hmm. um we've um denard again it's it's we've um denard where we want to go next and whether there's another company structure that would suit but i think we're pretty set in our ways for now um you know um as long as we continue to deliver the the quality of service and you know ultimately it's customer service and that's the way we do see you know you know all of the people that we work with even when we go to meetings that they're customers and they're people that you know we, we want to put on a really good show for and 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 help mm-hmm. um so um does that answer your question um, yeah, yeah. Kind of. Like my second question would be, and you sort of answered it. Um, like, is most are most of the activities that you run free for the end customer? And if not, like, who pays for it? Is it the the colleges and the universities, or do you run mostly on the on the grants and funding from? That's a mixed. Um, it's a mixed funding model. Mm-hmm. So we have some where um, the customers will pay directly um, for our services. We have some that are funded. Um, through the organisations that we work with, so we we work a lot of time of building those relationships. Um, and then the other side is, yeah, sometimes we get, you know, sometimes we get those funding grants that can allow us to to deliver um, other projects. 
they kind of come, you know, the, the the more reliable one for us is more around the the organisations themselves. Funding is not always reliable, yeah. <laughs> shall we say. It sometimes comes in drips and drops and and that's the way it's set up you know that's that's the that's the funding world and it you know, is but um you know it, you know we, we we haven't really looked at commercial side of sponsors we we um we did have a we did build a relationship with a philanthropist who gave us some money mm-hmm. so that was so so i think there's i think there's lots of different ways of going about it but i think with any of these financial strategies you've got to have a financial strategy and i think that's the idea now I certainly think the community golf over the last four years has been, uh, you know, it, 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 it's happened and it's, and it's got by, but there's been a lot of hours that have gone in. And I think we're getting to the point now where we, where we need to be much more efficient in our financial strategy and things like that. So that, so that's, so that's, that's kind of the 2017 mantle really is to try and get, you know, to try and get all those strategies to align and then, and then we can really move it forward, um, you know, or not as the case may be. You know, think you know, business is hard. It's hard, hmm. but it's great. It's, it's so much. It's a lot of fun. You get a lot of enjoyment out of going into business and doing, you know, doing something, um, you know, on your own, on your own, on your own back, and you know, working with lots of different people. But it, it, it's it's hard, um, and sometimes your your financial strategy, you know, fails and you know, falls in the water, and they. Oh God, I don't know what I'm going to do, <laughs> and yeah, you know, but you've but you've stuck to your financial strategy and you've tried to achieve something, and and sometimes and sometimes you just got to kind of shrug your shoulders and go, all right, we'll just get on with it. And there's nothing we can do. Yeah, it makes so, yeah. perfect sense. Um, so leaving money behind um, and going back to golf a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, even though like I completely understand that this is not your like main objective but do many mm. people that you've uh, you've met um, like transfer from your activities to golf clubs or or maybe just regular regular playing outside of your activities i think we have um it's, it's a very good question i don't think that we understand the full of it the complete um understanding of how many of those people would go through into our exit routes. What we do know is that um, we do know that there are many people who see community golf as their end point. Mm-hmm. We know that now. Um, we know that, however, <laughs> um, however, and, and they're quite happy, you know, playing golf regularly weekly at their community center they're very happy with that some of them however throwing a trip you know okay we're going down to the driving range okay are they going to be the next member of the golf club that particular group no they're not, it's, they're not going to get to that stage it's just they they their life their lifestyle um their income the factors in their life and mean that golf club membership and playing golf weekly is just out of their reach. It's not going to happen. So there's two things on that. One is what can we do more if there is, you know, and if, if there is something that they want to go towards then how can we encourage that? But then the second thing is, is we aren't a golf club. So what is the, what is the golf club doing in their lo- their local community, not not necessarily as in their local community, to engage with those people, we may very well get those people interested, get those people interested, but how can we then flow those through and into something that becomes, you know, I mean, still now, I mean, how many golf clubs are doing, you know, a free taster session or group sessions for it's it just. I just ca- I just can't see it there. Yeah. Um, and even when they are there, you know, what experience are they getting? Are they having a good time? Is anyone following up with them after they've come for a session or gone to the, the golf club? Possibly. But if it's but if one club falls down and doesn't do it, we've lost them. Yeah. From the whole system. <laughs> and 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 
and there are there are golf clubs with huge resources, huge resources. I mean, we're we're talking, you know, us as a company, we're, you know, last year we're somewhere around about a hundred thousand in the year. Okay, there are some golf clubs that are pushing a million a year, a million a year. Mm. <laughs> so, at some stage, you know, we 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 can only do so much. We can only do so much. So. If you are a million, if you are out there and you are a million <laughs> income, how can you work with us? Okay, <laughs> you have resources. Um, I'm sure there's a way of making it work. More than happy to have a conversation with anyone that wants to have a conversation about it. If you are, if you know, there's two sides of it as well. If if you if you are interested in in making money, that's absolutely fine. But that's not the be all and end all of what we're trying to achieve here. It's not just about that. There is. Um, the, I'm happy for people to go on, happy for pay to, you know, pay to go to your local golf club to use the services that the golf club offers. That's absolutely fine. But they are a customer at the end of it as well. So it's really important that, you know, you know, if you are a people business, you've got a great golf club that is people focused and customer focused, um, then, then we're happy to, we're happy to, to partner with you because it, it, it sort of falls on us. If, if we, if we get these people interested and then they say, yeah, we would love to go to a golf club. And we do have it. We've, we've had a group recently who said, we'd like to go to our local golf club. If that golf club, if we then, after a year of working with that group, bear in mind, it sometimes takes a year to get those group to a point where they're interested, interested, interested. Okay, right, really interested now. We then take them to a golf club. They have a bad experience. We've lost them mm. completely. All that year work, completely down the pan. So we're very careful with what golf clubs we work with, we won't work with everyone, and that's I'm, and I'm sorry about that. <laughs> but the ones that are interested, and we can see you're interested, and we'll ask you various questions about, you know, about your 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 business, and 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 certainly bring some people along. And if there's a if there's a you know if there's a if there is a mentality that you know we're not really interested, we're not really in this. Well, sorry, that's not really for us, really. Yeah. You know, we, we won't we won't we won't work with you. And sorry. <laughs> so, let, so we have been quite yeah. yeah. So let's say I, I um run a golf club. I'm a say the secretary yes. or whoever, director. Yep. And yep. I want to have more golfers. So what would you say in your experience as a county development officer as, and oh, right yeah. now in community golf, what can golf clubs do? Um, to get more more golfers, and you, you've covered some of it with your last answer. Go right? out there, yeah. Go out there, take the clubs, take the balls, get yourself out into the community, go and talk to people. That's as simple as it is. That's all we do. It's really not. Um, it's certainly been blown up to be, but it is hard work, and just accept that it's hard work. And but if you're not prepared to go out of the golf club and go and talk to people go and get customers then that's that's it that's that's all we do um there's 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 sad as, and there's no magic formula it just is it's hard work it's hard work but mm. sorry that's, that's that's it yeah <laughs> <laughs> just hustle just hustle um, that's all you got your pros you've got you've got pros you've got volunteers at the club you've got you know you, you're a gm you you you're responsible for the managing and future development of the club. So that's that's yeah. That's, you know, it's, we've got to do it. We've got to do it. Otherwise, otherwise, you know, the the club will be you know, the club won't be there. Sadly. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Here's something I, I just I just thought of. Like not not <laughs> many not many golf clubs and not many coaches think of new golfers in terms of their lifetime value. Let's say as a as a customer. Um, so as you as you know, the the activities that you run and and all the mm. um, going out, like it, it costs money. But even if you get one or two people that will be members or will play golf for the rest of their lives, like they're gonna bring back. Yeah. Okay. Here's a question. Here's a question. Okay. You've got those people, and. You may have, I think, what's the lifetime value? Something like twenty? Or was it the average? Is it about twenty-five thousand? I don't know. Actually. I, I can't. I can't remember. Someone. I can't remember. Where I read that. It's about twenty-five thousand on average per lifetime. Mm. 
Is it lifetime? What did you say? Lifetime member or lifetime? Yeah, yeah, it could or be. Lifetime participant. Yeah, or... yeah. Okay. Where does that 25,000 end up? Does it end up with the person who activates those people to get them interested? Probably not. Yeah. Um, does it end up with the pro? Okay, well, some of it might. It's probably going to end up with the owner of the golf club or, you know, we've got some good mini golf around here. So now, nowadays, probably those venues that are going to... So, so the venues themselves are going to make a huge amount of money from those people. So... And that, and that money doesn't... Does that money come back or does it just go to a, an offshore bank account? I don't know. Mm. But <laughs> where's the money going? So... That twenty, so 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 for us, we 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 love as part of what we do. We love to pass people on to other partners, and including clubs, that get them going on to the next stages of their golf or life or whatever it is. It's up to them to decide that. Say it will go to a golf club and they get that twenty thousand. Why would community golf continue to do it? Why would we do it? We're not getting probably a great, you know, volunteers and, you know, volunteers at club. I had a, I had a very lucky when I was young. So I had a great junior organizer who, who done everything for us, drove us around. He, you know, he's, he never got anything. He never got anything back from the club. In fact, the club didn't like him. Hmm. <laughs> Perhaps, you know, he used to sit in board meetings and say, juniors are the future of our game. And the board hated him. <laughs> It was great. He was great. He was great. He was, you know, and, you know, and, but he, he never wanted that to it. He didn't, it wasn't about that, but it might have been nice to say, to go back there once, once we got the member and then go, oh God, well, I remember where this came from now. Let's follow this back. Da, 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 da. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. Why don't we put a thousand, two thousand pounds back into the game? Yeah. Just to, just because it's the right thing to do. Okay, we'll take the eighteen thousand. That's great. Eighteen thousand you can have. Or t- let's say twenty five. Okay, you got eighteen thousand. You can take that. Okay, just. To, but two thousand. If we are not, you know, and again, it comes back to resources, I suppose. If we are not, you know, putting resources back into the ground. Okay, so you have a lovely flower outside, and it grows, it grows, grows. I like thinking about nature because it helps me think. <laughs> you got a lovely flower outside, and. And and you you put the roots down, someone comes along, takes the head off the flower. Well, okay, great. Okay, that's the tw- that's the eighteen thousand. You've still got the two thousand left in the ground. Where's that gone? Oh, we'll take that as well. Well, there's nothing left. Mm. We can't we can't grow another flower. <laughs> oh, we'll take the root. You know, so that's what I feel has happened. Um, and and the, and the, and it's just been the way that it's happened. And it's just been. It, it, I don't blame anyone for that. It's just the way it's happened, and it's the way that, and, we, and when it ha- when it's happened, we've just carried on doing it and carried on doing, and it and it hasn't, you know. So then, when you say, okay, well, where's the next flower going to grow? We go, we don't know, because we we don't have anything. We we don't have the resources have gone from the ground. So, and there will come a stage. I know Greg was talking about this, and is there will come a stage where where we, where we won't have as many golfers. It's as simple as that. And, the, and I, my fear, my, my fear is I really do worry the next, the next, um, the next five, 10 years. I do, I do worry. Um, because if we don't change what we're doing, I do think there has been some change in the last 12 months. I can, I can feel there's been some changes, you know, as people going into positions as, you know, there's, there's sort of some to in and fro in and change of politics as well. At, um, you know, you can, you can, you know, all, all this, you know, Brexit, everything it, it all is, is all about change at the moment. So I do think there is some, there's something going on at the moment, but I, I do, I do really worry. Um, I do really worry that, you know, there are going to be more golf clubs that do close and more facilities. Um, but perhaps we need a different type of facility. We need a more of a lifestyle business um you know that that includes the family and things like that so 
That was actually and, my, and my, some... my next question. So what do you think? Oh, well, there you go. Oh, I thought you were going to say that's your next business. So <laughs> no, get on with it. No. <laughs> get on with it. Maybe. Take me with you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one day. No, my question would be uh, actually two questions. So one, in this, in what's going on now with the numbers going down, what can yeah. coaches do? Because we, we, talk, we talked a little bit about the, the clubs and the, the general yeah. industry. What can we as coaches do? That's one question. And second, what do you think of the new... Um, new developments in the in the game itself like the six holes and we might we might talk about the the ob- urban golf a little bit um oh god yeah <laughs> so yeah these two two questions one what, what can coaches do right now yeah and two um can the should the should the should golf change or does it have to change or do you think it's just yeah i don't know okay i think i think what, what can coaches do to change uh to, to change it um if if one is i think we can one is i think we can we can always be better and we should always aspire to be better and we should always be upskilling ourselves and um but i do think we're as coaches you know we use venues and we and we use uh, we use land and it 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 it's much wider i think than just the coaches um you know you know what Yes, yes, we can be better. We we can deliver programs better, and we can go into community and deliver better. And we should always be aspiring to do that. But you know, there is a side where you know that the, the, there are venues. I mean, if if you t- take a golf coach and they're, they're at a venue, some of their their rents will have gone up. Um, you know, they're paying more to the, the their landlord effectively to to coach at a venue. That's re- it makes it really difficult to sometimes survive. Um, so, what can we do better? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know because because that's going to restrict what you can do. You know, if if coaches are not invested in, and 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 I do believe that PGA coaches, I believe that sports coaches should be invested in much more than they are, and and be allowed to grow their business. Um, I've seen I've seen situations where clubs have clubs have outed a pro because the pro is doing very well for himself, hmm. and the club's not doing so well. Well, take a look in the mirror. If a pro's doing well, great, brilliant. Yeah. You know why restrict the? You know why? Why can we not get our head around win-win scenarios? The club wins, the pro wins, and and vice versa, and have a really healthy relationship between the club and coach. This the and, and it does happen, and I know I know examples where it has worked, but the majority, and I would say the majority, have issues between the club and the coach, or or even where the club is not working with the coach to you know and maybe paying quite a lot of money to do what you know, what, what oh, why are we paying him fifty thousand a year oh well what, what does he do um well he gets the shop for free well okay he gets shop for free. that's fine okay we want him to develop his business that's great that's great that's great um but what's the next plan what well, where are we in five years time are we are we going to have club members still here yeah. Oh, I don't, I don't know. Um, so, so it, it, it's both. I, I don't think I can, I can't see a coach in isolation. I th- I'm seeing him as part of a bigger, you know, you are the club, you know, you're the, you're the club and the coach. The, the, those two elements, members, everything have got to move together yeah. and stop this kind of, you know, oh, well, you're winning. Okay, well, we're losing. You know, let's both win. It's actually, you know, have something where both wins. I mean, we're doing this interview now and, you know, I'm thinking about things I hadn't thought about before, you know. So, you know, but then at the same time, we, you know, we've got a, we're a win-win relationship. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And it, and that, and I think that's really positive. You know, when I talked to Greg, when I talked to Neil, we, we have this kind of win-win relationship. We want each other to do well. And then, the, then we do well. And it, it, so I think if clubs could kind of harness that a bit more, you know, but then maybe that's not possible. I don't know. I know 
past relationships and stuff like that can have can have issues but um so yeah so that's a difficult sorry i can i can answer that quite directly <laughs> that's but, fine i guess the, the ball is on on both sides a bit as well here's something i've been considering the last few months um what if coaches i guess you you talked about it as well um what if coaches could have coaches or, or companies like like yours um a deal with clubs like a proper deal uh, that whenever they bring a new yep. member in they get a percentage of of their life value let's say um, yeah love it absolutely love it this is this is a pure um, win-win yeah no i love it i love it because yeah no, it's absolutely win-win and it i i don't know how it would work in practice but that's up to, that's up to someone to come up with something yeah. And say, well, actually, this works. Let's 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 make it work. And if you know, if people are going through programs, and 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 I don't know, someone's got to come up with it. Someone's <laughs> got to say, okay, I we can get this working. Um, but yeah, no, I, I love the idea of it. Love the idea of it. So what about the the changes in golf? Because I've I've heard I think it might have been Neil Neil Plumer, um mm-hmm. that he said with the new new activities like like, like cross golf or uh, urban golf um, <laughs> that yeah. he, he he worries a bit that <laughs> yeah it so is, do I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think he said it's that it's uh, oh it is yeah mm. that it's a bit like ten pin bowling that people yeah. do it once in a while but it, they like there is no transfer to Oh, I don't want to call it real golf because I, I do think yeah. that golf yeah, 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 has to yeah, change yeah. a bit. Yeah. Um, but that it's it is a completely different product. It could be the same as with your activities, as you say. Like for some people, this is this is the end game. That is their that is their golf, and um, I think this is a. It's certainly something that I. No, I'm not going to say I sit up at night and wondering, <laughs> <laughs> but um, but it does it does it. It it does worry me because I I love the tradition of the game. Um, you know, I love I love everything the game stands for. I just, oh, just the the game is um, it is a game of life. It's just such a challenge. Eighteen holes is you know, and you see with cricket, you know, you've got the test matches and um, and uh, what's the oh, what's it called twenty uh, twenty. Mm-hmm. I love twenty twenty. I've never been to a test match, so. And I'd love to see a test match because I think I'd actually really enjoy it. But I have been to a 2020 match. My friends go to 2020. So I think... There's like a place for both. I think so. I think mm. that um, there will always be demand for the 18-hole game. Um, that, that, that much is clear, I think. Um, but we will just have lots of different offers. And, and there's, you know, some people say it's against tradition. And, you know, it, it's, just, it's just evolving. You know, it's, we can't control people and what they want. They want, and and you know that there are a lot of clubs, you know, still today that that are set up for males. Yeah. It, it, they're just set up, you know, and 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 that's changed massively. And that you know, and you see the golf clubs that are very family orientated, and they and they do much better. Um. In you know, in in driving new people into the game, not always much better financially. That's probably not quite right. But yeah. but but they but they do much better engaging the family. That's what I mean. Sorry, do much better engaging the family, and that's where I think the future is. Um, it, it, it is all about that. I was, you know, I mean, I, I've just I don't know if you saw, but I, I I've just read John Jacobs' book, um, which I f- is a fascinating read. But on the last page, he says. Something to those to that degree, and this is 1987, 30 years ago. And he said the future is in family golf. <laughs> 30 <laughs> years ago, so he was he was saying it then, way ahead of his time, 1987. <laughs> but we still don't seem to have moved in 30 years. But maybe we have in the last 12 months. I don't. So, you know, maybe things are just. Oh, no, let's just. Let's just keep it the same. It's fine. You know, it's fine. It's fine. We're not losing that many members. You know, I mean, I remember from 2000 and, oh, I'm trying to think of the figures now, 2004 to 14, we lost something like 10% of members in Surrey. 10%. Hmm. Um, it's a lot of members. It's a lot of members. Hmm. But, 
so maybe that is starting to hit home now. Um, and I and I do believe, and I, I've seen 2020, and and it actually, I, it's only at the tw- you know after the 2020, I thought I really want to see a test match. It so let's use it as a let's use it as a stepping stone right. to the end game to some extent. I still believe that we should hold up 18 holes as the because it is a great test of the mind and it's a it's just a great test but unfortunately we have less influence over that than we used to we used to be able to say this is how you're going to play golf and people used to love it and whereas now i think we've got to we've got to give a bit more and and come up with products that are slightly different and persuade people to go through the ranks into 18 hole and i think over time we will do that but someone else might have completely different, you know, some a businessman or someone might come in with completely different ideas to it, and and say, well, this is how we're going, and everyone and all the population go with that, like happened with 2020. You know, it 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 took the it took the traditional game and it's just going, oh, wow, I can't believe, you know, I can't believe it's gone in this direction so quickly. It was really quick. You know, but I don't think it should be feared. I, f- I think there's a, I think there is a danger that you know things like urban golf and cross golf. Look, I go to have a laugh <laughs> with my friends. <laughs> you know, it's not like I want everyone to play cross golf or urban golf. It, you know, also it's impractical as well because if, <laughs> if I look out, <laughs> I look outside on my road, I can't really go outside and just start playing urban golf, cross golf. You know, it's, <laughs> there's 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 something called the police, and I'm, you know, <laughs> and, and uh, so I don't really want to upset them. <laughs> and and to be honest with you, it, you know, to you know, to some extent, it, it it is a little bit dangerous. It, it's you know, it is a little bit like that. But that's kind of the edge of it. And and um, you know, I mean, some of some of the large sponsorship organisations use it in part of their marketing. You know, they they yes, you know, they promote you know the urban golf, street golf concept, and cross golf even as well um, as part of their marketing to in, to engage people. And it does engage people. And and I think that some some of those people, you know, um, could move into your in inverted commas real golf. I quite I still quite it is real golf, you know. I, you know I, I I still will call it real golf because I do think it is real golf. <laughs> but so yeah, so I um, you're probably contrary to what other people think as well. And they, they see me going, and I've got friends. Like, what on earth are you doing going there? Well, it's just fun. And yeah. I came back with some ideas. You know, you know, the, the reason for doing it at Olympic Park is that I'd went to Cologne the year before, and then I said, oh, "Well, we can do that in London. Let's do it." And then we did it. You know, we learned a lot from. I tell you what, we learned a, lot, learned a lot about event management that we wouldn't have learned unless I'd been to Cologne. Hmm. So, you know, and actually, we've used some of that event management learning in the 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 event at Epsom. You know, so so is it beneficial? Yeah, it it was useful. It was mad, but it was it was you know, but it was but it was fun and 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 we learned from it anyway. So that's that's the key. So tr- I would say that to anyone is is you know um, go and try something, just try something new that you know that someone else is going. No, oh, I, I don't think we should be doing that. We just go and do it, and it's it's probably not as bad as you would probably think. Yeah, just just yeah. a bit of background for for people listening. So you you organized two years was it two years ago the European Urban Golf Championships? I think and it was 2015. Yeah, at the Olympic Park. Yeah, yeah, it was held at the Olympic Park. I had the pleasure of of helping out, and it was yeah, it was yeah, it was thank mad. you. I appreciate it. It was so cool. It was like teams from all over the Europe, and it's great it was, fun. I think it was nine. I think it was nine teams from across Europe came over. Teams of six, nine, and twelve to compete. Um, Friday was kind of like a UK tournament, and we played nine holes. Um, we had a great, we had a great hole on the. I think it was the uh, what was it? I think it was the seventh or the eighth hole. Dog Legacy oh, at the Olympic <laughs> Park, unbelievable. So uh, Ju- uh, Julia Brooke came up with that unbelievable name for a for a for a for a, for a hole. Dog Legacy hole, love that. <laughs> Yeah. Um but that's what we were about, you know we were, we were about that and we we're just about having fun really and trying not to take things a, a bit too seriously and you know if 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 people go away from that event and they think of golf and you know a little bit differently it's great 
but there is there is so much there's there's I think I feel there's a lot more that that we can do as you know to just get people interested in it and it was just one it was one method of trying to get people interested and you know thankfully all the nine countries turned up so that was that was <laughs> <laughs> we'd have organized all that for nothing and I'd have been pretty annoyed to be honest but um but we were supported we were supported by the mayor of London and London Legacy Development Corporation London Sport etc etc so um yeah it was a good experience it's a good experience yeah, not great. sure we'll do it there again don't tell mm. don't tell the input part but <laughs> it was it was it's tough from a operational side but um but we'll, we'll we'll do one in the future sometime i just want to go back to something you said um just underscore i think a crucial point that i sometimes forget about um that even when even with the changes in golf uh, like mm. the shorter formats or, or whatever like it doesn't mean that the traditional game is is will be gone like it just means that we're going to provide different opportunities to different kinds of people uh it's not that the the, the game is going to change i sometimes forget about it and i think it's crucial when we talk to more traditional traditionally oriented um golfers yeah and we've we've sort of got it in we've sort of got it in our head you know i think as as coaches that you know this is how you should play the game this is how you learn the game and it's very much a systematic you know it 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 gives us confidence which which i think is a good thing that this is the way that someone should learn this is the way that but you know as a human race the way that we learn is is very sporadic you know i learn things i'm you know i'm having a shower now and i, I suddenly something pops in me like oh, i wish i'd remember that on wednesday <laughs> or or had that thought or or some you know Sometimes it just makes sense. Something just makes sense, and and I think the 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 issue with some of the styles of of, of coaching, and and I, don't get me wrong, I, I started there, you know, and I um, and I you know sometimes sometimes believe it or not, make mistakes and we slip back into it, and you go, oh, I don't know why I did that. Oh God, I'm really annoyed with myself. Or we can't just have a systematic approach and go, that's what we need to do. Okay, we're going to get them to there next. You know, and and even for our development programs, you know, it's very much okay. Let's get them from there. We do a taster session. We do a structured session. We then go on to the nine hole course. Okay, then we do the eighteen. It it doesn't work like that. It, you know, because someone might go a taster session. Oh, I really enjoy this, and then just go and get hooked on eighteen holes. Great. Mm. Um, and we've had people who've done that. Who've gone. I went out for eighteen holes with my dad at the weekend. They're like, we only went to a taster session last week. Oh yeah, but I just really, I really, I went out there. Where did we track it? We didn't track it, so that's that's part of our learning. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but there are people who would just go, oh okay, we'll just go and yeah, okay, let's just go and play, um, and play. And that was the one thing that came out for Neil in you know in, uh, when when I listened to Neil is play. Let's get people playing the game and stop this whole, you know, and just let let people learn and go on that journey, you know, because that's how I started really. It was just 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 ran in the back garden you know just bringing clubs around you know probably falling over four or five times and and then and then oh, someone's put a hole in front of me oh, right, i've got to get this in there come on i'm gonna <laughs> no it's, it's just honestly so much fun such a game <laughs> oh, <that's> a... <laughs> but a great test cool <laughs> um all right uh, rich i want to be um i want to be mindful of your time thank you very much yeah, for no for your knowledge and experience for sharing your experience is there something that you you want to you want to add something like a, a lesson or, or a takeaway what from my side yeah i think from my side i think it's well first of all thank you very much for inviting me on um absolute yeah thank you thank you for the invite i really appreciate the opportunity to share my views um with other people that are, that are pushing down this line of you know of, of trying to do things a little bit differently um so thank you for that um certainly really support the, the 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 project and what you're trying to achieve um and it, it you, you know as you as you've said you know it's it's um it's difficult to find those networks sometimes as well of where people can share their views on participation so so i think that's really interesting um and then the other side is it's just you know if if there is anyone out there who wants to meet up for a coffee or things like that i mean myself and neil met up about two or three weeks ago for a coffee um Greg, I haven't seen for a while, but 
if there are people that are interested, it, it, the, the experience the experience I have and the knowledge I have is through experience. And if I can share that with other people, then hopefully that will broaden um, how we move forward in the future. So yeah. that if, if there is anyone out there, just just give me a call, look at the website, um, put it through onto uh, an email, and uh, I'll certainly help as much as I can um, to, to, to answer any questions that anyone's got. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no, no problem. Thank you. So, what's the what's the website address or what's your email address that people could reach you? Uh, sorry, it's uh, www.communitygolf.net, but mine's richard at community.net. And if anyone wants to call me, 07969213865. So, give us a call. Um, happy to talk anything through. If you're not sure where to start, I'm sure I can help point someone in the right direction. Um, but yeah, I, I like talking to other people, and and if I can help in any way, let us know. Awesome, Richard. I've got a text file full of notes. <laughs> and oh, you've got a lot to do. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, um, <laughs> hopefully we'll be in touch very soon. Yeah, yeah some, speak again soon. Yeah, stuff. definitely. Yeah. We can speak again soon. By the way, I'm just looking at your Skype profile picture and just, I just love that you're wearing jeans and playing golf. It's just, just <laughs> the small things. <laughs> oh, dear. yeah, no, it's just uh, I'm a little, little bit different times. But yeah, it's comfortable, casual. Yeah, sweet. Okay, Rich, thank you very much, and we'll be in touch. This is Wojciech again. Thanks so much for listening. If you have any sort of comments, feedback, whatever, shoot me an email at hi at participationcoaching.com or you can go to the website, participationcoaching.com, and comment below this podcast episode. On the website, you can also sign up for the mailing list. So if you want to subscribe and receive the updates of all the new episodes on your email, no spam, go to participationcoaching.com and if you enjoyed this episode I would really appreciate if you could share it with your network and after all the more people know about this sort of stuff the better off we all will be so thanks again for listening and I'll see you next time